Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyatiya Surayaha Ejo Varimidam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Tam Nasvina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O oh, my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality Godhead. Uh, from my respectful base, it is not to you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifest the universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who has eternally existed in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaita vutra paramo nyumatsiranam satam vedyam vastavam atra vastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulan. Shimad bhagate mahamuni krite. Kimva parer ishwara. Sadyohi de abrudite tra. Kriti behesusus vistakshana. Completely reject all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mystery. This beautiful Bhagavad poem compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity it is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other script? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavad by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kalpatarur galitam phalam sukamakad amrita dravya samyam pipata bhagavatam rasamalayam O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literature, it emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, even though its nectarian juice is already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Invitam Sukta Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ilyank Ilyantak Sohi Vadrani Vidunati Srihitsatam
To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, <clears throat> or to hear of, uh, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Sadarajas tamo bhava kamalu badayas chete taranavidam sitvam sattve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat takva vijnanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate. <clears throat> when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. <clears throat> and, and, uh, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis Chidyante sarvasamsaya Siyante chasyakarmani Stvaidvat lunishwari Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Personality, a Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 31. Visoko Brahma Sampatya. Sanchina Dvaita Samsaya Lina Prakriti Nirgunyad Alingatvad Asambhava Translation Because of his possessing spiritual assets, the doubts of duality were completely cut off. Thus he was freed from the three modes of material nature and placed in transcendence. There was no longer any chance of his becoming entangled in birth and death, for he was freed from material form. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Doubts of duality begin from the misconception of the material body which is accepted as the self by less intelligent persons. The most foolish part of our ignorance is our identifying with this material body, self. Everything in relation with the body is ignorantly accepted by our own, as our own. 
doubts due to the misconception of myself and mine. In other words, my body, my relatives, my property, my wife, my children, my wealth, my country, my community, and hundreds and thousands of similar illusory complications, contemplations, cause bewilderment for the conditioned soul. By assimilating the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, one is sure to be released from such bewilderment because real knowledge is, is knowledge that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudhi, Lord Krishna, is everything, including oneself. Everything is a manifestation of his potency as part and parcel. The potency and potent are non-different. So the conception of duality is at once mitigated by attainment of perfect knowledge. As soon as Arjuna took up the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, expert as he was, he could at once eradicate the material conception of Lord Krishna his eternal friend. He could realize that the Lord was still present before him by his instruction, by his form, by his pastime, by his qualities, and everything else related to him. He could realize that Lord Krishna, his friend, was still present before him by his transcendental presence in different non-dual energies. And there was no question of attainment of the association of the Lord by another change of body under the influence of time and space. By attainment of absolute knowledge, one can be in association with the Lord constantly, even in this present life, simply by hearing, chanting, thinking of, and worshiping the Supreme Lord. One can see him, one can feel his presence, even in his present life, simply by understanding the Advaya Jnana, Lord, or the Absolute Lord. Through the process of devotional service, which begins with hearing about him, Lord Chaitanya says that simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can at once wash off the dust on the mirror of pure consciousness. And as soon as the dust is removed, one is at once freed from all material conditions. To become free from material conditions means to liberate the soul. As soon as one is therefore situated in absolute knowledge, his material conception of life is removed, or he emerges from a false conception of life. Thus, the function of the pure soul is revived in spiritual realization. This practical realization of the living being is made possible due to his becoming free from the reaction of the three modes of material nature, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. By the grace of the Lord, the pure devotee is at once raised to the place of the absolute. And there is no chance of the devotees becoming materially entangled again in conditioned life. One is not able to feel the presence of the Lord in all circumstances until one is endowed with the required transcendental vision possible by devotional service prescribed in the, in the revealed scriptures. Arjuna had attained this stage long before on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and when he apparently felt the absence of the Lord, he at once took shelter of the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, and thus again he was placed in his original position. This is the position of Vishoka, or stage of being freed from all grief and anxiety. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, in this purport, which is full of transcendental knowledge, um, the whole matrix of misconceptions is explained. And it's a complicated matrix. And misconceptions are everywhere around us. 
in modern life. Beginning with a series such as uh, Darwin's Evolution of Species. The whole theory is specious. Look that word up. There's species and specious. Two different words. So specious, S P E C I O U S, means it's false. It's a lie. There's no factual basis to it at all. And it's all speculation. And it was all meant to mislead people and believe that God did not create this world or the species. First of all, uh, they get around the question of creation of the world. They say, well, that's eternal. It's always been there. We don't have to worry about who created it. And then secondly, the evolution of species, it happened without any intelligence behind it through an infinite number of permutations and combinations according to the uh, so-called law of survival of the fittest and uh, through trial and error and then to add a little bit more confusion to it they say and genetic mutation darwin didn't know about genetic mutation so they come up with this theory that has no factual basis and completely rejects any intelligent person or god behind it and it just it just happens through natural selection there's no such thing as natural selection so we see this is taught in the schools so in your school Prabhu they teach you this yeah yes they're teaching to everybody and if you ex ascribe to it if you accept it then you don't have to believe in God you just believe in speculative so-called junk science and it's junk science because there's no factual basis to it there's no proof that uh, there's an evolution of species by this dumb process the dumb, the dumbbell process no intelligence behind it, it all happens uh, by trial and error and, and who's who's committing the trial and error who's doing the trial and error nobody nature on its own is doing trial and error it's the, it's completely false and if you if you try to follow that theory of the evolution through natural selection it doesn't work like for example let's say you want to get a job in microsoft and you go to uh, the interview and uh, the interviewer asks you a bunch of questions and he says uh, well if you're you know uh, C++ or if you know JavaScript or if you know this or that I'm going to give you a problem you can solve it and you say okay so he said I'll come back in an hour and see how you're progressing and in an hour he comes back and said how's it going he said oh it's going great oh okay uh, did you solve the problem I said no not yet okay and uh, can I see what you've done well uh, sir let me explain something to you I'm a believer in Darwin's theory of evolution. So the solution to the problem you gave me is evolving right now. So, oh, oh, very good. I'm, I'm glad you explained that to me. Well, when it evolves to a solution, you give me a call. And uh, then we'll continue talking. So you think, is he ever going to call him? No. It, it, it's all phony. It's nonsense. It's, it's bogus. Uh, nothing happens by itself there has to be an intelligence behind it and everything we see in this world today is intelligence driven for example uh, you have uh, how do you make a computer program it, does it happen by random trial and error not not uh, uh, let's say organized by some intelligent persons no object-oriented programming is a whole process that that has uh, checks and balances to avoid human error and it's all intelligence driven and it's a process of creation you create a, a computer program there's nothing trial and error there's no uh, uh, 
you know, selection, uh, survival of the fittest, or anything like that. It's all intelligence driven. And everything we say, see in life today is intelligence driven. But yet they say that the whole creation happened without any intelligence behind it. And they teach that to our kids. So we see the whole thing is junk and it's misleading. So here, uh, Prabhupada says, doubts of duality begin from the misconception of the material body. Well, the whole Darwin theory is about material bodies evolving by themselves from one cell. And how did the one cell uh, uh, evolve? That's another mystery. But somehow it happened. And then one cell became two cells, and two cells became four cells, and four cells became eight cells. And all of a sudden, we have human beings and elephants and giraffes. And nonsense. It's complete nonsense. So, and, and you see, everything is based on the material body, including Darwin's theory. Why? Because they completely reject the existence of a soul. And if there is a soul, it developed by material combination also through the process of evolution. That's the way they explain these things. So as soon as we have a misconception of the material body, doubts of duality arise. And what does that mean? Well, uh, we're never quite sure what decision to make. <clears throat> we, we, because there's a dual competing Let's say, uh, just like today, we're going to be, there's going to be an election, and you have to make a decision between two people. That's the doubt of duality. <coughs> Which one are you going to choose? Right? Each one is saying, oh, you choose the other guy, it's disaster. And, and uh, oh, that guy's not a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. Vote for me. Let's see, and then who are you going to vote for? So, and it's all based on the body. It's, it's not, you're, they're not looking at the uh, soul at all. And, and they're not measuring how many misconceptions those two people have. If, if you count how many misconceptions, they both would be uh, eliminated as candidates because they both have the doubts of duality because of the misconception of the material body which is accepted as a self by less intelligent persons. So both candidates are less intelligent because they both accept the body uh, as the self, and that's not true. So here's a way, this, this is a way to analyze things. If we read this one purport, we'll be able to anal analyze things correctly in life. Uh, otherwise, we'll be misled by all these speculative theories. Big Bang, we come from monkeys, natural selection, there's no God, and, uh, and uh, you have a right to question everything, even the existence of God and your own existence. In fact, uh, there's, a there's a scientist that wrote an article some time ago, and he said, it's very possible there's some magician behind this whole creation, <laughs> right? Because, and, and that we're all living in, a, in an illusion right now, you see. Even, even the scientists can see that by the way people act. Everyone's walking around in a daze with misconceptions in their mind and going off in the wrong direction every time about what is the purpose of life, how to attain that purpose, and so forth. So you have these, uh, somebody standing in the street, a young kid from uh, the high school, and he's got a sign, Black Lives Matter, you know, no, no justice, no peace. And they think that they're doing something right. Well, what's right is try and figure out what your relationship with Krishna is and what the purpose of life is. And Try and understand the difference between the body and the soul, and the body and the, and the individual soul and the super soul, and how everything is coming originally from Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, or absolute truth. Try and understand those things. Don't try and understand Black Lives Matter. Wait, well, how come 
How about white lives matter? How about green lives matter? How about everybody's life matters? So these things are purposely put forward to mislead people, to create uh, animosity and hatred between different classes, different uh, ethnic groups, different uh, races, etc. And as long as that chaos is going on, certain people who are trying to manipulate it become powerful and rich, and everybody else suffers. So next, he says, the most foolish part of our ignorance is our identifying this material body with the self. That's everybody. Black lives matter, that's identifying with self. White lives matter, that's identifying the self with the body, right? And although if you identify with the blood, then everybody's the same, because the blood of everyone is, is red, right? But if you identify with the skin, then everybody's different. So all these are false criterions. That's why the main emphasis in the, uh, in the Vedas is the soul. Therefore, Krishna says, Dehino spin yata dehe komaran yovanam jara tata dehantara pratya diras tatra namuyate. So he says, as the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. So we see the whole emphasis in the Vedas is the soul. And in material life, the whole emphasis is the body, which is a temporary thing that's always changing. So you cannot say, I am this body, because which body are you talking about? We've already had many bodies in this lifetime. So all these false premises mislead people and can mislead even devotees. Uh, I, I know... Uh, one person, uh, they're initiated devotee, but they identify themselves as Jewish. There's another devotee I know who's initiated. He identifies himself as a Latino. There's another devotee uh, that, even though they're a devotee, they identify themselves in all these different ways. So, uh, Everything should be based on the soul, not on the body. And then Prabhupada writes, everything in relation with the body is ignorantly accepted as our own. Doubts due to misconceptions of myself and mine. In other words, my body, my relatives, my property, my wife, my husband, my children, my wealth, my country, my community, and hundreds and thousands of similar illusory contemplations cause bewilderment for the conditioned soul. All uh, this what's called ahamma meti, I, me, and mine. This whole crazy insistence that I am something that I am not. <clears throat> and it causes bewilderment for the conditioned soul. I remember once I went to some uh, seminar meeting of, uh, and there was a discussion by Armenians about uh, you know how to uh, how to uh, deal with uh, the Turkish government that was denying the massacre of Armenians in World War one so uh, they, they had a map of Turkey and there was a group of, of people talking. And they said, you know, well, this one is, this, this, this part of Turkey is ours. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get it back. You know, we're going we're gonna to fight to get it back. You know, this, this is our, this is our land. Right. So and it was all, it was like illusory. It was all an illusion. It was, it was, a, it was a phantom of, uh, uh, of uh, illusion. You know, first of all, uh, they're never going to be able to defeat the Turkish army which is one of the most powerful armies in the world. <laughs> and they were talking about, this is ours. We're going to get this back, you know. So, and if you, even if you get it back, so what? Right? What, does that solve any problem? You'll, you'll be at war forever. So this type of, uh, of craziness 
it's a type of insanity that people are suffering from. Not only this one group, all groups of people are, uh, have the same insanity of I, me, and mine. This is mine. This belongs to me. <clears throat> so, and Prabhupada says, by assimilating the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, one is sure to be released from such bewilderment because real knowledge is knowledge that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, Lord Krishna, is everything, including oneself. Now, does that sound like Mayavad philosophy? Yes, it does, but it's not. Because when you say, including uh, myself, uh, or it says here, uh, including oneself. In other words, Krishna is everything. Yes, uh, Krishna is everything, but everything is not Krishna. They, you have to put that in there also, because everything is made of Krishna's energy. But at the same time, uh, everything that emanates from Krishna as the supreme person is also a person. Because the origin is a person, everything, just like a, a mother and father, they have a child. Is the child an it or is it a person? It's a person because the mother and father are a person, right? So, and everything that emanates from per Krishna is also personal. It's also a person in the sense that it's, uh, it's his unique energy expanding. So you have superior energy, which are all persons, and you have inferior energy, which is matter or prakriti. But both of them are spiritual. Both of them are eternal. So but even the material energy, in a sense, is personal because Krishna is present everywhere in the material energy as Paramatma. So the primary quality of everything whether it be in the spiritual world or the material world, is Krishna, because he's present everywhere. However, uh, the, the superior energy, everything is personal. The material energy is impersonal. <clears throat> so the scientists are only studying the impersonal material energy. It's no wonder that they have no idea of God. How can you discover God it's something that is impersonal. Well, actually, it's not impersonal in the sense that Krishna is present in every atom of the material universe. But to discover that, you would have to have spiritual vision. You cannot discover it with material vision. Krishna is greater than the greatest, and he's smaller than the smallest. So, and, and this is explained uh, in the eighth chapter Bhagavad Gita is a very interesting statement in the, uh, what is it? Uh, third verse, is it? Or is it the eighth verse? Mm. Anyway, it says, uh, one second. Uh. Mm. Okay, one more second. If I don't find it, then we'll come back to it. Uh, so, so, so. Okay, we'll come back to this. Anyway, uh, so to finish, Prabhupada says that as soon as one is therefore situated in absolute knowledge, his material conception of life is removed, or he emerges from a false conception of life. 
Thus, the function of the pure soul is revived in spiritual realization. So unless we assimilate this transcendental knowledge as presented by Krishna and Bhagavad Gita, we are actually a sleepwalker. We're unconsciously walking around doing things with false conceptions in the mind about who we are. But if we assimilate the knowledge as given in Bhagavad Gita, we become a pure soul again. We understand that we're not this body, but we are eternally related to Krishna as his servant. So coming back to the function of the pure soul, it's re revived by spiritual realization, by everyday hearing about who Krishna is, who we are, what is the material nature, what is time, and what is our real duty in life. We come back to our original position as the eternal servant of Krishna, as a pure soul, and free of all these false conceptions that bind us to the cycle of birth and death. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Good. Yes. So they, they look puzzled when you say that. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know who I am? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, that everyone have already has a doubt who they are, but they don't think about it seriously. They just go along you know, until they meet someone like you and put a doubt in their mind that they really don't know who they are. Yeah, what I was looking for is here. It's in 8th chapter, ninth verse, where it says, mm. he says, Krishna is also the supreme controller of the universe, and he is the maintainer and instructor of humanity. He is smaller than the smallest. The living entity is one ten thousandth part of the tip of a hair. But the Lord is so inconceivably small that he enters into the heart of this particle. Therefore, he is called smaller than the smallest. As the supreme, he can enter into the atom and into the heart of the smallest, meaning the heart of the living entity who is only one ten thousandth the tip of a hair and control him as the super soul. Although so small, he is still all pervading. In other words, bigger than the biggest, everything is contained in him. He is also, uh, although so small, he is still all pervading and is maintaining everything. By him, all these planetary systems are sustained. We often wonder how these big planets are floating in the air. It is stated here that the Supreme Lord, by his inconceivable energy, is sustaining all these big planets and systems of galaxies. The word achintya, inconceivable, is very significant in this connection. God's energy is beyond our conception, beyond our thinking jurisdiction, and is therefore called inconceivable achintya. Who can argue this point? He pervades this material world and yet is beyond it. We cannot comprehend even this material world which is insignificant compared to the spiritual world. 
So how can we comprehend what is beyond? Achintya means that which is beyond this material world, that which our argument, logic, and philosophical speculation cannot touch, that which is inconceivable. Therefore, intelligent persons, avoiding useless argument and speculation, should accept what is stated in scriptures like the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and follow the principles they set down. This will lead one to understand. But this is how we return to the pure soul. So Krishna is smaller than the smallest. How are you, gonna, you can't even see an atom, and the soul is smaller than the atom, and Krishna is smaller than the soul, the individual soul. So how are you going to discover him? And then he's bigger than the biggest. His, the whole universe is contained in his form as the Virat Rupa. And all the universes, and, and there are millions of them, are contained in the gigantic body of Mahavishnu who is Krishna. Now, how are you going to understand these things? Yes. So we're not going to understand these things by so-called science observation with imperfect senses. You know, Darwin goes on a five-year trip down the coast of South America, and he collects a little bit of data, and then he comes back and speculates on it and makes a theory. <laughs> And and we're supposed to, and that's taught to our kids, you know. They're forced to learn it, you know. And 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 what happens is they become dumb by by accepting that, and it's they're forced to accept it. Yes, yeah, they're being they're being abused. They're they're not being. It's worse than sexual abuse because they're abusing the mind and and putting rot in the mind for the rest of their life. And, and, and it's being done in their most vulnerable years when they're only 14, 15. Well, it, it starts when they're like seven and it goes on right through college. And then when they come out, you know, they're, they're a zombie. You know, they believe I am this body. And sense gratification is the goal of life. And I have to work really hard to have money so that I can have all the sense gratification. And that's that's their philosophy. You see, that's how dangerous it is. Hari bo, ogoisa sila prabhupada ki jai.